Hi everyone! A few days ago, I walked past a convenience store. You know those stores that sell all sorts of things? I saw some cosmetic brushes on display and they were selling at very cheap prices. So I bought myself a few of them. This is one of them. I bought four brushes for $8.40 in Singapore currency. So that's less than six US dollar. So today I'm going to compare those brushes to real watercolor brushes. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So these are the four brushes. This is the generic packaging, I Pretty Gold. Hmm. This is the most expensive one, $3.90. And these three, they are $1.50 each, Singapore currency. This looks like a wash brush. This is very soft, it feels very nice. I will be comparing this with the flat brush. This is the Escoda Versatile. This is synthetic hair. This is designed in such a way to mimic natural hair so it can hold quite a lot of water. And this is probably synthetic hair as well. Let's take a look at this. I was told that this is for the eyebrows and this comb here is for the eyelashes. This is very clearly synthetic hair. And this looks like a filbert brush. I have a real filbert brush here. This is softer compared to this. This is a bit stiff. And lastly, we have the rigger. I'm not sure what this is called in the cosmetic world, but it looks like a rigger to me. This is a real rigger. The hair is longer, it's designed to hold more paint, so you can paint longer. If these brushes do not hold water, then this video might be cut short. Anyway, I have also prepared a sketch. So I'm going to be coloring this sketch using these brushes. But first, let's test out the brushes first and see what kind of strokes they can create. Let me start with the big brush first. So I'm going to wet this and wet the paint here. I'm going to try to create a flat wash so let's see if this brush can do the job this brush holds a lot of water I think this is a nice wash let me add a bit more paint to make this wash a bit stronger here's a close-up of the wet brush Let me try that again with a more concentrated wash. It seems to do very well, it works very well. And now for the flat brush. I think it performs similar to this brush. Both brushes are capable of producing flat washes easily. I'm quite amazed by the quality of the wash that this brush can create. Now this is much cheaper compared to this flat wash. The main difference probably would be the edges here when the brush is lifted off the paper. So with the flat brush, it seems that the edge is a bit straighter. With this brush, you can see some effects like this. So you have to lift off the brush a bit more carefully if you want the straight edge. But I think this is a nice style too. Surprisingly, this brush also holds quite a lot of water and it holds a lot of paint so you have to wash this brush properly to get all the paint out before you load with another color. The handle is a bit short though. And when I put this into my cup here, the metal, it goes all the way into the water. You can see the color has stained the bristles. Let's move on to the next brush. This looks like a filbert. I'm going to pick up some paint. 
The hair is a bit short, so it doesn't hold that much water. It does quite well too. Let's turn it on the side and see what kind of strokes I can get. It's a bit difficult to get a thin line. And if you want to get a thicker line, you have to change the way you position the brush. So when I press down a bit harder, it deposits more paint. You can see different concentrations here. Let me switch to the Filbert brush, this one. The hair on this is a bit longer, so it holds more water. And when I compare this with this, this is able to get me a more even uh, wash. Let's turn the brush on the side to see if I can get some thin lines. Now this brush it releases the pigment more consistently so I can still get a flat wash even though I press down harder here and here. This overall uh, wash is still quite even compared to this. So it seems like the real Filbert brush has the advantage here. Now let's try the Rieger brush. Let's move on to the cosmetic Rieger and the real Rieger. I'm going to start with the Cosmetic Rieger. This brush is a bit short, so let me try and hold it higher. It runs out of paint pretty quickly, so I have to reload it more often. But it's quite capable of drawing thin lines. Let me use it on the side and see what happens. So it doesn't hold a lot of paint. Let me switch over to use the real rigger. So this is how it looks like. This brush definitely has more spring because the hair is longer and it can hold more paint without having to constantly reload. This brush is also much longer so it's easier to control. This is definitely more comfortable to use. And let me use the side and see what kind of line I can create. So this is not suitable um, to use as a flat wash kind of brush which is not surprising of course. So I would say the advantage lies with the real rigger. This is a bit limited, but it can get the job done if you want to. You just have to constantly reload it with paint. The only thing I do not like is this is rather short, so it's a bit uncomfortable to use unless you have some way to extend the handle then that would make it more comfortable. And finally, let's move on to use this eyelash eyebrow comb brush thing. I'm going to wet this brush with some paint. All right, my first impression is this brush, it doesn't hold a lot of water. I think with brushes like this, you can use the splatter effect. So. Let's try that. This effect is actually quite nice. And these dots are very fine. Here's a close up at the splatter. 
Now this is very nice. You can use the brush to create very fine textural look. And now it's time for me to color this sketch. I'm going to start with the big brush again just to color this area first, the ground. I'm going to be using French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna with some red. This is, by the way, a mixture of Daniel Smith and Mission Go watercolor. So this is French Ultramarine. I have some Burnt Sienna here. So this is quite fun but challenging to use. It's a bit more difficult to use this brush compared to the flat brush because with the flat brush at least the brush has some sharp edges but this is round so it's a bit difficult to get into the small corners. So let me add a bit of red here. So all these small areas here, this is a bit difficult for me. Oops, I should have left that little triangle there white. Okay, let me switch to a different brush. I'm going to use the smaller brush. I need to use a few strokes in order to in order for me to cover that whole area. So a larger round brush would be more appropriate. And because it doesn't hold a lot of water, it's a bit difficult to get a flat wash. I have to constantly reload the paint. For the background, I am going to use some yellow and add the yellow to the purple mixture to get the muted wash. So this is a bit dark, but this should dry lighter so it's not too big of a problem. It's difficult to control because this brush is round. Let me leave some pockets of light there. And now I'm going to wait for this to dry before I add in the shadows to the bottom of the cars. This is almost dry now. I can use a very dark wash to color the shadows. Again, this is very difficult to control. A round brush with a sharp point is the best brush for this job. Each time my brush moves out of the screen is because I am reloading the paint. And these small areas here, these are the most difficult part to color with this brush. Perhaps I should switch to the rigor brush. Now when using a brush like this, it seems that if I do these short strokes, it will appear a bit patchy. And now for the finishing touch, I'm going to use the splatter brush to create some textures on the road. I have already cut out small pieces of paper to protect the white areas. I do not have masking fluid, so that's why I cut these small little pieces of paper to put here and let me test the splatter first 
I'll be using a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. So this is the color that I'm going to get. Looks very nice. I have covered all the areas where I do not want the splatter to be with paper. So let's try this. It doesn't hold a lot of paint so I have to reload it. Here's a close up of the effect. So this is the completed sketch painted using cosmetic brushes. I'm actually quite pleased with the result. By the way, I added some background to the right side here to make this sketch look a bit more balanced. So of the four brushes, the one that I like the most is actually this big brush. This is a very capable brush. It holds more water than I expected and it's quite good at creating flat washes so this is worth the money. The second brush that I like is this splatter brush. Even though it doesn't hold a lot of water, it can create very nice splatter effect. And this brush is quite small, smaller than normal toothbrush so I can put this inside a box and this is very portable. Now the last two brushes, well, the only downside to these two brushes is the hair is not that long so it doesn't, so they do not hold a lot of water so you have to constantly reload them. But other than that, I think they are still good enough for painting purposes. The small brush is good for going into small areas and for uh, touching up little details. This brush is a bit more challenging to use because this doesn't have a sharp point and when painting large areas like this it's very difficult for this to go into the small areas that is where a round brush would perform better so that's all for today's video if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below thanks for watching see you in the next video bye